Now, one thing you might want to do is build screw ports with individual screws in them that you can separate out later. Uh, let's go ahead and make one real quick. So I'm going to go out of Live Boolean and then go out of Edit Mode Control N. And we'll, again, we'll go back to our cylinder 3D and we'll go ahead and initialize this again. We'll go down here to our, before we make it a polymesh 3D, we'll go to initialize here. We're going to set our H divides. We'll set that to 12 this time and our V divides to 3 again. And if you turn on polyframe, you can see we're just getting a very simple cylinder here. I'm going to go to make polymesh 3D. And let's go ahead and create like a recess screw port. Now, we're basically going to have, this will be a subtracted mesh. We're going to have a little button or a little screw sitting right down in the side of this mesh right here. So what we're going to do, and we also want to bevel at the top too. So let's go ahead and do that. There's a couple different ways that you can bevel something. So again, let's go back down to our polygroups group by normals. And now I can hit, I can go to my Z modeler brush BZM, hover over this face, do QMesh polygroup island, and then instead of QMeshing, I'm gonna hold down shift and just pushing along that surface normal. And now that I've got the depth that I want, because I'm gonna have this screw sitting right at the bottom of this, I'm gonna QMesh polygroup island again, and I'm gonna come up, and then I'm gonna QMesh this out. And now if I want to, I can go here to slide, edge loop complete, and I can just pull this down. And now as we push this into our object, it's going to start beveling out as we push in. Now we're gonna have to put a screw port on here. So in order to get the placement right, what I'm gonna do is temporarily, I'm just gonna du duplicate this off. I'm gonna go into solo mode here. I'm gonna hold down control shift, go to select rect. I'm just going to control shift drag and hold down alt and get rid of all that stuff here. Uh, everything except for that bottom face here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete hidden and I'm gonna flip those bottom faces so I can see them. There we go. So I know my screw needs to go right on this bottom face here and face up this way. So I'm gonna go to brush insert, BI industrial parts, hit M or just drag it from here you got your Phillips head screw. We'll just go ahead and put one right down at the bottom. If we go out of solo mode and we turn off our original top sub tool, we can go ahead and just drag that out. We can kind of see, oh, we want it to fit basically right in there, let's say. Um, I don't need that original placement plane anymore. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do split unmasked points. And then I can grab this plane here and just delete that out of there. So now if I have both of these showing and I go into transparent, I've got a screw sitting at the bottom of this like recessed beveled area here. Let's go ahead and take this one. If I hit D, I know I'm gonna wanna subdivide this later to get these facets gone. So I'm gonna go uh, hit D for to turn on dynamic preview. So we've got our dynamic subdisc turns on and you can already see if I go into solo mode now, uh, this isn't smoothing the way I want. Um, what we can do though, is we can go here to crease and we'll change our crease tolerance down to like 45 and that'll go ahead and crease all these edges for me. Um, if you didn't want to crease these ones for some reason, you can hover over with the Z modeler brush BZM, hover over this edge, do crease edge loop complete and hold down alt and you can like, you know, soften that transition or not, kind of depends on what you're looking at or going for here. Um, but I think we're in good shape. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control W to make this all one polygroup. And then for this one, I'm gonna hit Control W, make that all one polygroup. Then I'm going to merge these down. Oops, let's go to merge down. I'm gonna hold down Control Alt and I'm gonna assign that to Control E. So I can just use a hotkey for that. We'll go ahead and merge those down. And now I've got a new insert mesh brush. So I'm gonna uh, flip around to the side. So I wanna look at it this way when I drag it out of my object. I'm gonna go to brush, create insert mesh, new or you can append it to another one if you want to that you already have set up. We'll go ahead and uh, go back to that test sphere we were kind of playing with. We'll turn off floor here, we'll go out of solo mode. And since this one is set to uh, subtractive already with live Boolean turned on, I can go ahead and go to this side, go to our new brush here, insert that. And of course we need to make sure our depth is correct. So, um, I mean, you don't have to, you can go ahead and uh, just hit W and with live Boolean turned on, you can kind of see where it needs to embed. But you can see as we push the cylinder in, it's going to ahead and automatically bevel that outer ring right there. Now you don't see the screw port or the screw in there. We're making the screw port, but the screw is just kind of sitting there in the bottom. We can go ahead and hit D and turn on dynamic subdiv. And now you can see we're getting a much nicer edge around that bevel there. But like I said, you can adjust the depth so it'll automatically embed, or you can just hit W to move. And once you're happy with the placement, let's go ahead and go out of live Boolean mode temporarily. We'll go into solo mode here. So we've got a screw port right in the middle of there. And luckily they're both separate polygroups. So all I have to do is hold down control shift. We'll isolate that one, control shift drag. And now we've got these two. If we want to, we can go ahead and when we inserted this, we automatically mask this one. That's under the brush settings here under brush auto masking. There is a auto mask uh, mesh insert. So that went ahead and mask everything else. What I can do is go ahead and do split unmasked points. We can make this all one sub tool over here that's still subtractive. We're still pushing that into our mesh. But now what I can do is I can hold down control shift and that'll go ahead and select, if I go into 
solo mode here. That's going to go ahead and select that polygon by control shift drag. Now we just have the screw. So now I can do split hidden. And now this is in its own subtool. Now, when I turn back on live boolean, go to solo mode here, we're not going to see the screw because I set the subtractive. Go ahead and set that to additive and then make this cut happen before the screw. And now our screw is going to show up in there. However, if you want to select the screw later and like assign a separate material to it or move it around, you're not going to want it to be in this group. So when you don't have a start group, it just assumes that everything visible is in its own one start group. So now what we can do is we can make this sphere a start group. We can make this screw a start group. So when I go to subtool, Boolean, turn on dynamic subdivs and then make Boolean mesh. I've got my U mesh over here and it's got two distinct subtools. You've got, if we go into solo mode, you've got our original one with the screw port here and our recessed area here. And then we've got our screw, which is a completely separate mesh as you can see. Now, because it's a separate mesh, what I can do if I go into solo mode here, we can reconstruct subdivisions on here and get all of those lost subdivisions back because it wasn't Boolean with anything. It didn't make any weird triangles or anything like that. So we still have all the flexibility of just the original insert mesh brush available to us.